check out my CNC cart. It lifts up to make space for more shop storage. This is my new CNC cart. It has a bunch of useful storage options on it. It has a special drawer for the computer that controls the CNC, along with two additional storage drawers. It has two very long storage cubbies for tripods and other big items. It even has a hidden area in the back for storing resin for my resin 3D printers. But its most important feature is how it saves space by lifting up and out of the way at the touch of a button. My name is David Gewertz and you're watching the Advanced Geekery channel. In addition to testing 3D printers, we also explore maker and smart home technology, stress test servers, fly drones, and regularly dive deep into Advanced Geekery for fun and profit. If you've been following me on over on Instagram, you saw this project come together step by step. I often post my projects as I work on them so you can view what I'm working on sometimes months before I put together a video on YouTube. As with most of my socials, I'm David Gewertz on Instagram. Feel free to follow and see what I'm working on next. But let's get back to my ultimate space-saving CNC cart and why I built it this way. This is technically a two-car garage, but a previous owner pulled the back wall into the garage to provide a couple of closets and bathroom in the main house living space. Now this garage won't even fit a single car, so floor space is a very serious consideration. I use this garage as a workshop a resin 3D printing lab, a filming studio, and an all-purpose project assembly area. Unfortunately, I can't do all four of these things at the same time, so everything has to be on wheels so I can reconfigure the shop for each new project. The inventable CNC I built at the beginning of last year is a little bigger than four feet in each direction. That makes it the largest consumer of floor space in my small garage, bigger even than my table saw. I initially mounted the CNC on top of two Rockler rolling tables, but it took up too much space. I needed a way to have my CNC, but have it go away when not in use. And those two work rolling work tables were intended for the Fab Lab in the other room, so I needed it to hold the 3D printers as well. The most common space-saving solution for CNCs is to flip them on their sides. Some folks flip them up and attach them to a wall, while others build rolling carts that take only two by four feet of floor space instead of the little over four by four feet used when the table is flat. I originally planned on implementing one of those approaches, but I didn't like the idea of storing the CNC on its side, and even if only two feet by four feet was used, it was still two, pe two feet <laughs> by four feet of dead space. Then the folks at Uplift Desk sent me a desk to review. This was unrelated to the CNC, but I brought it into the garage and tried it for a bunch of different scenarios. I wasn't as much interested in a standing desk to stand at and type my, on my computer as I was in a flexible mobile work surface for the shop. It turns out to have a lot of uses. My favorite is as a product photography platform that adjusts up and down. But as I was getting to know the Uplift desk, I thought, what if I could store other rolling work items under it? The desk they sent me rises to about 50 inches, and that was more than enough space to tuck both my table saw and folding miter saw underneath when not in use. And then, inspiration struck. What if I could use an uplift desk or uplift desk frame as the base for my CNC cart? Then I could lift the CNC out of the way when it's not in use and store other carts underneath it. I'd get double the usable storage space in one 4x4 footprint. I was super excited by the idea, and I reached out to my contact at Uplift Desk to see if they wanted to partner on this challenge. They kindly contributed their V2 desk frame to the project. The frame itself has double legs and a cross piece on the bottom, making it even more robust than the already impressive desk Uplift had previously sent me. It ranges from about 25 inches to 50 inches in height to the top of the frame. Width is adjustable from 41 to 72 inches, so it fit widthwise my 50-inch CNC table perfectly. In terms of depth, the frame is 28.5 inches deep, which meant I'd have about a 10-inch overhang in the front and back of the cart. Given the weight of the CNC, about 100 pounds in use, and the weight of the plywood storage unit I was planning on building, another 200 pounds or so, the cart would be very stable even with a 10-inch overhang. 
And because the lifting mechanism has a 535 pound lifting capacity, I knew it could handle the plywood cart, the CNC, anything I stored in the cart, and material to be cut on the CNC. It's a heck of a robust frame. I got the biggest wheels uplift offered, which gave me a few more inches of tuck-in height in the highest extended position. The idea was promising. I had the mechanism. Now all I had to do was build the storage unit. I used Fusion 360's parametric design feature for the design of the unit. This helped me map out the various storage cubbies and drawers without necessarily finalizing any dimensions until I saw how it all came together. With parametric design in Fusion 360, you assign variables to all of your dimensions. Then when you change the value of those variables, the design reformats accordingly. Frankly, unless your design is super simple, parametric design is the only way to go. It's flexible, robust, and actually makes the design process easier in places. I will link to the Fusion design down below, and you're welcome to use it with this one caveat, downloader beware. It is not meant as a professional set of plans, and some dimensions were tweaked in the final cart build. You're welcome to use my Fusion design, but don't come crying to me if it's not perfect. It's not. Keep in mind that I'm new to this woodworking thing. In fact, the very first step in building this cart was really quite intimidating. I had never cut full-size sheets of plywood before. The only wood I could get delivered for a reasonable price was construction grade, which was both kind of ugly and kind of worked. Very, very worked. Both slabs of plywood were going to have the same set of cuts, so I decided to clamp them together and cut both at once using my track saw. Not only had I never cut full sheets of plywood, I had also never tried cutting two sheets at once. So many newbie firsts here. I did a lot of careful measuring and made my cuts a bit oversized. My intent was to trim them down later on the table and miter saw. So these had to be accurate, but not necessarily perfect, thankfully. To protect the old cabinet I was using as a cutting surface, I laid down a couple of sheets of pink foam insulation. That way, if the blade was a little too deep, it would cut into the foam and not into the cabinet surface. And then, wearing my safety glasses, I cut. And no, the tiny little dust collection bag wasn't adequate. By the time I was done with these cuts, I was covered in sawdust. And then it was time to move inside for the rest of the project. Because I have limited space, I have to set up each tool station for use one at a time. One of the things I was hoping is that this new super space-saving CNC cart would give me a bit more space and I could keep two tools operating at the same time. That actually worked out. That's cool. But until the cart was built, I had to stage my work. The first thing I did was set up the table saw and perform all the rip cuts on the spines of the cart. Because the spines connect the base of the storage unit with the top level that holds the CNC itself, they have to be absolutely accurate. That's a perfect job for a table saw and fence. But there was more to cut on the table saw. I have three drawers to build, and all of the cuts breaking down the parts for the drawers also had to be cut on the table saw. All in all, I had to make six backs, six fronts, 12 sides, three bottoms, and three drawer fronts. The result was a very nice stack of labeled components ready for further use. Next, I had to put away the table saw and set up the miter saw. This is my first project with my new miter station, and while it worked, it will definitely need some tuning for future projects. Because the wood was so warped and because I had a number of spines that needed to be identical, I clamped them together and cut them together as one unit, which turned out to be a rather stressful approach. Once I had cut the spines to length, it was time to cut the drawer pieces down to size. Rather than use clamps, these parts were small enough and from wood straight enough that I was able to use blue tape to clamp identical boards together. Next, I needed to assemble the drawers, but because the drawer base was going to go inside the drawer sides and be held in place by pocket hole screws, I needed a way to keep the base at the right height while putting it together. The obvious choice given all the 3D printing I do was to 3D print a bunch of spacing blocks. As it turns out, not only were the spacing blocks great for assembling the drawers, but they have proven to be useful for all sorts of other tasks around the workshop. Before assembling the drawer boxes, I needed to drill holes in the back of each drawer to allow a power or data cable, actually a power and data cable, to reach inside. I also needed to drill the pocket holes that I used as the joinery method to hold the drawers together. The next step is assembling the drawer boxes. But before I do that, I need to talk to you about fear and intimidation. I have never built drawers before. I was completely freaked out by how precise the various components had to be for the entire thing to fit and work. But if I wanted my design to come to life, I had to get past my trepidation and work some wood. 
Look, let me be clear here. You do not have to be an expert woodworker to build a useful storage unit or cabinet. I sure as heck am not. All I've done is learn basic steps, work very carefully, make some mistakes, and keep at it. Most woodworkers wouldn't be all that proud because they made three basic drawers, but for me, it was a huge accomplishment that required me to overcome a lot of angst and apprehension. And you know what? It wasn't that hard. Challenging and hard work, yes, but I took my time and I was careful, and now I have three working drawers. You can see how the pocket hole screws, the 3D printed spacer blocks, and a little persuasion work together to get three working drawer boxes. I stared at those finished boxes for days thinking, I made those. I put a lot of thought into the order of operations for this project. At first, I thought it would make sense to install all the sidewalls and then attach the drawers to them. But as I mentioned, I'm not entirely confident in my ability to get measurements right, so I changed up my approach to one that took into account the possibility of error. What I did instead was put in one side spine. Then I fit the completed drawer boxes and their sliders into place. Then I put in the next side spine. That way I could be sure the boxes would fit perfectly or at least close enough. Once that first set of drawers was done, I repeated the process with the big deep drawer on the left, fitting the third spine once the drawer box was in place. It was then that I set up and installed the drawer slides. These things are intimidating, but once you realize that you have to separate the pieces and attach them in sequence, it's not that bad. I used spacers to make sure everything lined up. The drawers work. They're not as smooth as I would have liked. I suspect one of the spines is slightly out of true, but the drawers open and close reliably, and that's really all I need them to do, especially since these are my first real drawers. I consider this a resounding success. Next up was making the drawer fronts and installing the drawer pulls. I thought a lot about what kind of drawer pulls I wanted and concluded I needed something smooth that wouldn't catch on jackets or clothes. The CNC is going to live right next to our carport door, meaning my wife and I pass by it constantly on the way to and from the cars, often with our hands full. If we brushed up against the CNC cart drawers, we didn't want anything to catch on the drawer pulls. I did a bunch of measuring and then put some carpet tape on the less appealing side of the drawer fronts. I then affixed the fronts to the drawers, making sure to leave some space between them so they wouldn't fight with each other. I used a fancy Craig drawer pull jig to get the screw holes just right, and still I drilled one set too high. I then drilled through the fronts and the drawer boxes and affixed the poles to the drawers. Once that was done, I went back in and installed a few spare screws inside the drawers to fully secure the drawer fronts to the drawer boxes. And then the drawers were done. If you recall, a key aspect of this table design is there's a pull-out drawer that supports and stores the laptop that runs the CNC. So I needed power to be able to go up to the laptop drawer. To do this, I drilled a hole in the back of the drawer boxes and then enlarged it a bit using a rather hefty Forstner bit. To make sure I didn't drill into my workbench, I put some styrofoam insulation pads under the unit first. Once I put in that access hole, I realized I liked the idea of cable access to the inside of the unit. So I then drilled access holes through the sides of all the spines so that I could run cords anywhere I might want at a later date. Now it was time to add the last of the spines to the table. These were going to be the walls that supported the top of the table, which in turn would support the CNC. The most interesting of these spines was behind the drawers. I left this a little long and didn't cut it down until the drawers were in place and their two spines were mounted. This indented back panel was where I'd store all my resin for my resin printers. Once this was in place, I added the two outside spines and the box frame was done. It was time to add the top. Although the top and the bottom were both cut to exactly the same size, I was a bit nervous until I was able to place the top sheet of three quarter inch plywood on top of the spines and see that it did, in fact, fit. I used pocket holes on the outside spines to secure the top, but since it was too much of a hassle to do so from deep inside the table, I just drilled down from the top made a bit of room for the screw heads with a countersink bit, and screwed the inner spines to the top from the surface of the CNC table. I didn't care about how that looked because it was going to be under the CNC. As long as the surface was smooth and level, I was good. And that was it. The cart storage box was complete. I recruited my wife to help flip it so I could attach the lifting mechanism. I have to give a huge shout out of thanks to the folks at Uplift Desk. When I pitched them on the idea for this cart, I could tell they were a bit dubious, but they were willing to take a chance and supply me with their Uplift four standing desk frame. I specifically chose this model because there was nothing blocking the front or the back, so I could easily slide carts or machinery underneath. It also has a lift capacity of 535 pounds. As I mentioned before, that's enough not only to support the two sheets of heavy plywood that make up the cart storage box, 
but even heavier wood that might be placed on the CNC for machining. So far, it's been rock solid. Once again, this project required me to make precise measurements, this time to place the two main leg supports at the very outside of the unit. I originally placed them based on the screw holes on the metal frames, but found out they weren't symmetrical, so I then did some careful offset measuring and got the mounts to place correctly. I fitted the cross members in place temporarily to make sure that everything would go together, and then I screwed down the main side mounts. The leg mounts and the cross members came next, which did require a bit of fiddling, but after doing more measuring and making judicious use of clamps, they went into place. I then proceeded to screw every piece I could into the plywood bottom of my CNC card. By the time I was done, the metal mounting bracket was very secure. One thing that was kind of cool was that I used the original uplift desk to build this uplift desk frame. The power lifting capacity is great for raising and lowering work height, and as I got to the point where I needed to attach the bottom cross members and wheels, I just lowered the entire assembly until it was convenient to work on. Once everything was in place, I installed the electronics, did a bit of wire management, and it was complete. But then I ran into a challenge. This project used two sheets of three quarter inch plywood, a half inch sheet of half inch plywood, and the uplift desk frame. Together, the entire unit weighed more than 300 pounds, and it had to be flipped over and lowered to the floor. I wound up recruiting some friends, and with four of us, we were able to flip it and place it on the floor. And that was it. The project was complete. I finished this project a few months ago, and it's been an absolute win. I made a number of relatively complex CNC projects using it, and when I was done with each, I simply elevated the entire cart and slid my workshop gear back underneath. That's a game changer. Having used the CNC in this small space without the ability to space multiply, I was often juggling and shifting things around just to move through the room. Now that I can double up where the cart lives with other items, there's a lot more room to move and work. This was the single biggest woodworking project I've ever done, with a couple of firsts for me, including full sheets of plywood and making drawers. But it's incredibly satisfying to have it done, especially since it was something I really needed, and I can see its benefits each day. Once again, a huge shout out of thanks to the folks at Uplift Desk. By space doubling under one of their standard desks and under this CNC cart, I've increased my workable space in the shop considerably. And with that, I encourage you to stretch your comfort zone and make something you need. Go out there and make it awesome.